Welcome to the video. I'll be showing you a full guide on how to set up and use the proximity prompts in your Roblox game. Before anything, you'll want to open the View tab and make sure that you have Explorer and Properties opened. Now, go back to the Home tab and create a new part. This will be the part we will place our proximity prompt in, so edit its size, color, and shape to the correct proportions that you will need it in. Also make sure you go to the part's properties and check that it is anchored. Once you're done with that, hover over the part in the Explorer tab and press on the plus sign. Search for Proximity Prompt, and when you find it, click on it to insert it into the part. If you test the game and walk over to the part, you will see that an interactable prompt will appear if you go close enough. If you look at the prompt's properties, you'll see a big selection of values. For now, we'll only have to focus on these ones. If your game supports console, choose a button for the player to use to interact with the prompt. Usually I just leave it with the default button that's chosen. Now just do the same thing with the keyboard input code. Here you have a bigger selection to choose from, but I usually just use the letter E for this one. Now we have our hold duration and activation distance. The hold duration will determine the amount of time that it will take for the player to activate the prompt. I'll set it to one second. On the other hand, the activation distance is how close the player has to be for the prompt to appear on his or her screen. You can leave this alone, but I'll set this value to 15 for this video. If we test the game again, you'll now see that you'll have to hold the prompt for one second before it activates. Now that we have our prompt set up, let's add a function to it. Let's make it so that when the prompt is activated, a brand new part will spawn from a certain position. First, insert another part into the workspace. This will be where all of the new parts spawn from. Change the name of this part to be part spawn. To precisely locate the position of this part, set the size to one by one by one. Also, have the parts can collide turned off and it's anchored turned on. You can also turn the part transparent, but for this video I'll keep it visible. Make sure to position it at the location where you want the parts to spawn from. Now in Explorer, go to the proximity prompt and click on the plus sign. Then, insert a script into the prompt. Now, let's get to scripting. We'll first start by identifying the proximity prompt. Now, let's create a function that activates whenever the prompt is activated by a player. Let's start by identifying two variables, the part that is being created and the part spawn. Now, we'll have to list the new part's properties. These will be the part's name, size, shape, position, and its parent in the explorer. Just in case, we'll make sure the new part will have its anchored as false and its can collide as true. Here's the full script. If you test the game and interact with the prompt, you'll see that a newly made part will spawn from our part spawn. Now that was cool. Let's try to make the prompt damage the player when interacted with instead of spawning a part. Let's first start by disabling the part spawning script. Now, go back to the proximity prompt in the explorer and click on the plus sign. Insert another script into the prompt. Now, let's get scripting again. Like our previous script, we will first start by identifying the prompt. We'll also create a function that will activate whenever the prompt is activated. However, make sure to add player in the brackets as seen here so that the script can detect who is using the prompt. Now, we will locate the player's character and humanoid. We are ultimately trying to find the humanoid to access the player's health. Next, we will make the player deal 10 health points whenever the prompt is interacted with. If you want it to deal more or less damage, you can always change the number value here. Here's the full script. If you test the game and activate the proximity prompt, you'll now see that it will deal 10 damage to your player. If you change the minus sign in the script into a plus sign, you can reverse the function and make the prompt heal the player instead. Also, don't forget that you are able to customize the proximity prompt by changing the action text and the object text. Anyways, YouTube thinks that you'll like this video, so check it out if you're down for it. But other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.